Welcome to Work Life by Design. I'm your host, Mel Marsden. As a passionate entrepreneur with a desire to create places where people and business thrive, I hope to inspire you to find your place at work and in life so you can live a life by design. You'll hear stories of transformation, exploring everything from organizational psychology to brand and identifying opportunities in your workplace and your life to inspire your human potential. So let's get started. Hello and welcome back to Work Life by Design. Happy New Year. Now, when I'm recording this, it is the 18th of January, so I feel like I can still say Happy New Year that we aren't too that far in yet. But with everything that's happening in the world at the moment, I hope you are staying well and looking after yourself because I know that this has not been the start to the year that we all had anticipated or expected. We were hoping to get a brand new slate, no doubt. And it hasn't quite turned out that way. So please, I hope that everyone is doing their best to stay as well as can be. But I just want to sort of start by reflecting back on how 2021 kind of closed out for us. And I am really cognizant of the fact that it feels like so many of us just crawled across that finish line last year, myself included. I don't think I realized just how exhausted I was at the end of 2021 until I actually stopped. Now, stopping over Christmas break, like many people, isn't really going to happen until after Christmas because you wrap up work, you got to do all your baking, finalize all your Christmas presents, you've got and got Christmas Day. It can be quite hectic. And it's not really until after, you know, the festivities of Christmas have all kind of died down that you then kind of go, okay, now I can kind of switch off and I can relax. And it wasn't really for me until like the second week of January that I actually felt like myself again. I remember waking up one morning before the alarm had gone off, the sun had just come up and I felt really good. I felt energetic. So I got out of bed and I thought I'm going to take the dog for a walk. And so I went through the national park and I remember getting home and then I did a sound healing meditation. I had a really beautiful slow morning and I did some journaling and it was just beautiful. And I remember sitting there as I was journaling going, oh, this is what it's like to not feel tired. And that was a huge moment for me, a big wake up call. And I went, I am running on all cylinders constantly and just wearing myself out. And it's taken me two weeks to get back on track. You know, some people were going back to work in in the next day. And here I am sitting there going, I'm only just unwinding. Thank God I'm not going back until the 10th of January. And that become a real focus for me. So I was fortunate enough to spend four days at home by myself over the Christmas period. Now, normally I take the Christmas period, that that holiday break, and I take myself away for two days and I start mapping out and planning for my year ahead. And during that four days that I was at home, I had the spaciousness to be able to do that at home. So rather than going away, I got to, to do that at home. It wasn't until New Year's Day that I actually felt inspired enough to sit down and to do that and that I had decompressed enough to be able to do that. So I spent the entire day in my PJs, set myself up in my bed, and I worked my way through my Live a Life by Design workbook. Now, this is the workbook that I work through every year, so that's nothing new for me, but I just felt like I had that space and it was a beautiful New Year's Day because it was so cool it was raining outside it was just a gorgeous day I really love it when the rain's coming down I love listening to it I love how it cools all the air down and it was just it was really comfortable and so I've lit a candle I've got some background music going and really kind of set the scene for myself and spread out on my bed and I make myself a nice cup of tea and then I start working through my book. And effectively, I just sort of bunkered down at home and turned it into a little bubble and made myself a a home retreat for a few days. And it was absolutely gorgeous. But what I noticed that was really coming up for me through that period was there was a couple of things. Now, if you've tuned into one of my earlier episodes, it was actually episode 69, it's called I Have a Confession to Make. I unpack how my year in 2021 kind of started and the evolution of that year. And 
everything that came up through the year and how my mindset was when I first kicked off that year. And what I realized was that 2021 was actually the year that I actually started to walk my own path. I had started to embrace what my own idea of success was before I felt like I had been responding to what everyone else's concept of success looked like, what I should be doing, how I should be running my business, how I should be doing this, how I should be doing that. And I wasn't really tuning into what I wanted or how I wanted to create the life that I wanted to live and, you know, not work all the crazy hours and not put all this effort into these things, but be able to have almost like a bit more of a portfolio career. And so it wasn't until 2021 that I started to realize that. And what I reflected on is like 2021 was the year that I turned 40 and it took me until my 40s to realize who I really am and what I actually wanted from this life. And I was discussing this with Kerry Krieger, who is also one of our past guests, and she recently did a masterclass for us in the Work Life Lounge. And we were talking about this and the fact that it's like we get to our 40s and we start to realise these things. And it's this period of time in our life where we start to question who we are and what we want. And, you know, essentially this is probably where the whole 40s and your midlife crisis comes from. But it was just about realignment and it's about taking back that control. And in the masterclass that Carrie presented, she was talking about our seasons and cycles of life and how we work through them. And she described it in four quadrants. And the third quadrant is what we call autumn. And in autumn is when we start to question the boundaries and we reestablish those boundaries and we start to question all of these things and we start to strip away all of those things. And that third quadrant actually aligns with that midlife. You know, if if we only live to 80, hopefully I live a lot longer than that. But, you know, from that 40 period onward is when we start to get into this questioning and this shedding and this stripping away of all these layers. And it was just this really beautiful analogy and this idea of really starting to reconsider what it is that we want from our lives and how we're going to go about getting that. And I thought that was just a really beautiful way that it had all come together. Now, the other thing that I really realized in my reflections, because as I worked through my workbook, there's a lot of journaling prompts in there and questions to get me to think back over the year that's happened and what I'm going to take away from it. One of the other biggest things that really, really came through for me was that protecting myself is not selfish. It's essential. Now, when I talk about protecting myself, that's not about in terms of, you know, building a fortress around myself, but it was about taking care of me. It was about holding and honoring boundaries that I need to set to look after my emotional well-being, to look after my physical well-being and to look after my spiritual well-being in, in many ways as well. And it was about the ability to saying no sometimes is okay and that I do need to maintain that space for me because What I feel like happened for me is I got to the end of 2021 and I was just feeling empty. There was nothing left to give. Now, I often talk about the fact that we constantly need to be refueling our tank and we need to be lighting ourselves up. And I had let all of that go out the window for me. So, you know, don't monkey see, monkey do. (laughs) Just think about how you are making sure that you're taking care of yourself. Because what I realized is, I can't be the person that I want to be without first taking care of myself. Now, my coach, Amber Hawkins, says energy before action. And what she's saying here is that before you take any action, you need to check your energy. What is the energy that you're going to be bringing to that action? Do you have any energy? Is it negative energy? Is it positive energy? energy before action. And so this was like a bit of a light bulb moment for me, surprisingly. I just looked at this and went, this has got to change. And so as I start mapping out the year ahead and looking at what's coming up for me, both personally and professionally, I don't want to be crawling across the finish line in 2022 and feeling that way again. And, you know, something has got to change. I can't continue to do what I was doing and expect a different result. So I have to put plans in place to make active change to get a different outcome. And so sitting there working through my workbook, I start by working through what my focus and my intention is going to be for the year and then what I want my goals for the year ahead to be. Now, this year was really hard for me to actually land on a word or an intention for that year ahead. So I like to have that because I think it sets 
my focus for the year ahead. And I'll explain that a little bit further in a minute. But I really went around in circles with this and I had the essence of what I wanted 2022 to stand for for me and where I wanted to focus my attention. But I just felt like the actual articulation of that was just out of reach. So rather than sitting there and ruminating and trying to work out what my word was going to be, I took a bit of a different approach and I started with my goals. Now, my first physical reaction to thinking about setting goals for the year was like, hell no, like I am not adding any more to my plate. Like you think about the space that I was in, I was already exhausted. I didn't want to be, you know, focusing on adding anything more in. I was already completely depleted. So that in itself was a big flag for me and just going, no, I'm not adding anything more to my plate. And so, you know, that's what's gotten me into this mess in the first place. So I had to rethink that. Now, as an A-type personality, like I am driven by achievement. I need to set goals. I want to feel like I'm achieving. So I had to find a way that I could still have that sense of accomplishment and that sense of progress without compromising my health and well-being in the year ahead. Never before have we collectively experienced such change on a global scale. The pandemic, whilst on one hand has challenged us in ways that previously we could have only imagined, on the other, it has opened the doors to incredible opportunity. The opportunity to redesign our work lives in a way that works for us. An opportunity to disrupt, reset and recreate our new normal. And to help you on this journey, I am so excited to bring to you the Work Life Lounge. This is your VIP pass to accessing some of the greatest thought leaders in our world of work. So often we are told what we need to do and why we need to do it, but we are often left wondering, but how? How do I make the changes that I need to? And that's where the Work Life Lounge is here to support you, to guide you step by step through the how, to take back control and design your work life on your own terms. So to claim your seat in the lounge, head over to melissamarsden.com.au forward slash work life lounge. Now let's get back to the episode. I also talked about recently in one of my newsletters is around how I actually fell out of love with goal setting. Now, a couple of years ago, I was just making goals because they were the things that I thought I needed to do, you know, working through business programs and being part of networking groups and seeing what my peers were doing and going, oh, well, you know, I need to be able to do that and I need to have done that and this needs to be on my list as well. And so all of a sudden I had all of these goals that I was aiming for that weren't mine. And what that meant was that I then didn't achieve them or didn't work towards them. I didn't prioritize them because I wasn't motivated by them. I wasn't excited by them. They didn't respond to what I wanted. And so what I had to do is I had to flip that. I had to look at what that needed to be looking like for me. And it wasn't until I started reading the work of Daniel Laporte and she talks about heart-centered goal setting and about feeling those goals. And it was about how do you actually want to feel when you achieve that goal? What is it that's going to make you feel excited, illuminated, proud of yourself. What is that feeling going to feel like? And so it completely reframed these goals for me. And some of these things I know I needed to do because they were things that were going to progress my business forward, but I had to find a way of connecting with them myself. I had to find a way to get them to excite me so that I would make them a priority because if they're not going to excite me, I'm probably not going to spend the time on it. And therefore it's not going to be something that ever gets done. And so it just ends up being another thing on the to-do list. And it becomes this icky thing that you kind of procrastinate about and, and avoid at all costs. So I had to look at that. Now, what that led me to do though, is think about, well, if I want to actually feel this way, then who do I actually need to be? And this is what the game changer was for me, because No matter whether or not you are actually hitting that goal or achieving that goal, every time that you set something for yourself around who do I need to be to achieve that goal, you're actually becoming a better version of yourself in the process and you're enjoying the process. And that is what is the magic that sits behind that. 
Now, I've often spoken about goal setting in the past and how, you know, I've heard people who have fears around setting goals because they're frightened or they're scared or they feel embarrassed if they don't achieve those goals. But when you flip it like this and you start to think about, well, who do I want to be in a, as a result of working towards this goal, whether you hit that target or not, whether you get to that outcome, whether you achieve that goal, you have made progress because you have been focused on bettering yourself, improving yourself, enhancing yourself through that journey. And you've done it in a joyful way because you're focused on how you want to feel as you move through that. So it's a completely different shift on that whole idea. And so then it, it's about the progress. It becomes about the development, the growth that you're getting on the way. And so rather than having goals, I set myself intentions now. And I use these intentions to help guide myself through the year. And so under these intentions sit the things that I'd actually like to do but it's with this larger vision in mind. So I have the goals that I want to achieve, but they're sitting underneath these intentions. And so I've landed on five intentions, each with a statement that's sitting underneath to help give it context and give it direction for myself for the year ahead. Now, these focus points have come about by me looking at the priorities that I have for the year ahead. You know, bear in mind, I don't want to add anything more to my plate. And I've got some big things happening in 2022. So I'm actually having another baby in May. So there's a whole raft of things that need to sit behind that. I need to get my business baby ready. I need to be recruiting, you know, a 2IC and some support into the business. I need to be tightening up the processes that come with that because I actually would like to take some mat leave. This is definitely going to be my final baby. So I want to make sure that I have the space and the time to be able to be there with my baby. And so that also means we need to look at renovating the house because we're running out of room. We can't put all our kids in there. So it's all of these things that I've got coming up for me, which are big things this year. And so it's about looking at how I can then juggle the business and the baby and making space for all of that to happen. But the other things that I'm really conscious of is, you know, I want to make sure that I'm still giving the time and attention to my husband and to our kids. You know, we don't want this to be all about the new baby. It's like, how is everyone else being fitted into this? I also want to make sure that I'm taking care of me in this process as well. So I still have hobbies and interests and creative pursuits and skills that I want to develop. So how do I go about making sure that there's still time for those things for me to do? Because otherwise I'm going to end up in that depleted mess again, because I haven't prioritized the opportunity for me to do things that actually light me up. And, you know, I've still got business goals that I want to kick as well. So I need to be looking at all of these things, but I want to do it without hitting that burnout point. How can I do more with less? How can I work smarter and not harder And how can I be more connected back to me rather than just pushing through? How do I stay in alignment with those little niggles and those cues and those little warning signals that come up in your body that you often just kind of push to the side and go, "Ah, don't have time for you, not listening, I'm leaving you out. So they're the kinds of things that played into my mind. So I'm going to share with you my five intentions and the statements that I've got sitting underneath them for the year ahead. So My first one is yin, and this comes from the whole concept of yin and yang because yin is that feminine energy. It's about creativity. It's about flow. It's about freedom and relaxation and space. And so my statement that's sitting underneath that is a free, unrestrained and expansive feminine being, deeply connected and in tune with her body and soul, nurturing her nervous system to foster creativity, flow and energy. So this is my number one intention, and that's because I want to make sure that I am taking care of me. And I have yang in spades. It's about drive. It's about focus. It's about doing. It's about getting things done. Now, I need to find some space and some time to really dial up that yin because I need to be ensuring that I'm supporting my parasympathetic nervous system, that I'm getting into that relaxed mode because that's where I'm going to be more creative. That's where I'm going to find more expansiveness. That's where I'm going to find more energy. So that is a big one for me. 
The next one is around connection. And the statement that's sitting under this one is a loving, attentive, affectionate and caring partner and mother creating space for deeper quality connection to grow. So that's about drawing my attention back to my family, to making sure that I'm creating space and time for us to spend together, for us to be able to nurture each other and to be conscious and connected and present with them. Now, my third one is expression. And this is where it sits underneath my ability to nurture my own needs. And that's to be a free spirited, relaxed and in flow, embracing the messiness and the unknown that comes with creativity, no boundaries and no restraints and inspired by the world around me. So this is about nurturing those hobbies and those creative pursuits that I have, but doing it in a way that's unstructured and there's no pressure around it. It's like, how can I embed this into my everyday and that could be anything from my writing so that I can get my book finished through to painting or pottery or sculpture or any other kind of thing that happens with that so it's like bringing that attention back to how can I bring that into my days my fourth one is around confidence and it's a confident guide to those I support with the required skills knowledge and boundaries to be effective And so this is about my own personal development and how I want to give back into the community and what I service my clients with and how I support them in my training groups and my online programs and my coaching and my mentoring. How am I holding that space? And the last and final one is invest. And invest for me is I want to be financially savvy and independent with diverse income streams so that money flows to me whether I work for it or not. Now, I also had Mel Brown on the podcast uh, last year and Mel talks about having seven streams of income. And I think one of the mindsets that I had actually got stuck in was that we work for money. We go to work, we earn money. And that was my only stream of income. And I want to start looking at how I can diversify that. So I'm looking at investing and how can I put money into shares or property or wherever else that might go so that I can actually have a more diversified income stream supporting me more holistically rather than being solely reliant on the exchange of money for work. And that was a complete game changer for me in terms of mindset around money and how that can flow to me, whether I'm working for it or not. But it's also that deeper piece for me in terms of investment. It's a where else do I want to invest in myself? So investing can be financial, but it can also just be skills and confidence and anything else that comes with that. So it's a bit more diverse in that one. So these are my five intentions and my statements for how I'm really going to focus my energy for the year ahead. And it was through this that then I started to feel my word and the focus that I had for the year ahead and this overarching intention it started to emerge. And you might have actually heard me using the word a couple of times in there because it actually started to really resonate. Like it just, it just came out. And so my word for this year is spacious. And the definition of spacious is large or magnificent in scale, expansive. Now, this is not about growth or scale or expanding the business. It's about making space creating room, feeling expansive. It's about feeling unconfined and not feeling restricted or under pressure and like being able to actually breathe. It was about providing that point of realignment to refocus my priorities when things do start to feel compressed. And this is a really important thing is you want to be able to use your word to help realign you when things start to get wobbly, when the wheels start to fall off, when you do start to feel like you're under pressure. You can use this word to bring you back and go, okay, this is what's important to me. This is where my focus needs to be. This is how I actually want to live my life. So what do I need to change to bring all of those things back into line? And so when we're feeling full and nurtured and refueled and really energized, that is when we can start to make our greatest impact. And so that is why this word spacious is so important to me for this year is because when this is happening, things become effortless and easy. And this is that idea of being able to do more with less and not having to work harder, but being able to work smarter. Because when you're in flow, things are easy. It doesn't feel like it's taking a great deal of energy and that 
That is the feeling that I really want to embody this year. That is my focus. And so I first need to protect my own time and my own energy and my own mindset. And that is what I need to be doing by creating that spaciousness. Because what I realized is that this is not selfish. It is essential. I cannot be who I want to be if I'm depleted, if I'm run out, if I'm exhausted. It's just not possible. So this is going to be my focus for the year ahead. And it underpins all of my decision making. What events I attend, what conferences I go to, what speaking engagements I accept, what programs I'm going to launch and when I'm going to be launching them, the holidays we're going to be taking, any of the extracurricular stuff that I want to get involved in, let alone what the kids are going to get involved in. But it also helps me start to work out what my days and my weeks need to look like so I can make this happen. It is informing all of my planning, both my business and my personal. Now, I've already mapped out my entire year. I've got all of it done, but I'm going to be sharing my entire planning process in the next Work-Life Lounge Masterclass. So what I find is that we get so caught up in trying to do all these things, but we've got to really first establish our focus and our intention for the year ahead. And then I want to help you write your own plan for that year. And so I'm going to be sharing all of that with you in the Work-Life Lounge Masterclass coming up on February the 10th. It's at 10 a.m. in Queensland time and I'm going to be sharing with you tools and resources to support you on getting the clarity that you want and that you need to be able to map out your own year ahead and then how you're going to go about putting it into action. Because planning out your year ahead is not just about setting your annual goals and going, great, that's it, I've got them, they're there. Because when we don't take those annual goals and break them down into smaller steps that are achievable milestones along the way, they just kind of stay out there as these big things that we don't know how to action towards them. So I'm going to be showing you how to then break those down into quarterly goals and then what we need to be doing month by month and then how we can be setting ourselves up on a weekly basis and even a daily basis and what those rituals and routines are going to need to be to ensure that we stay focused and we stay aligned with actually moving our way through the year and doing it in a way that's going to work for us. So that masterclass is happening in the Work Life Lounge on the 10th of February. I'll pop a link to that in the show notes so you can go and check it out and uh, come and join us there because this is something I love doing every year. As you know, I love to do my planning. I'm going to be sharing with you all those tools and resources so that you've got those to take away. You've got them to implement. I'll show you the process so that you can really start to set yourself up for success this year. So I just want to say welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in again this year. We had such a huge growth in listeners at the end of 21. So I just want to say A big thank you to all of those new listeners and a huge thank you to all of those listeners that have been here since the beginning. I'm so very grateful that you are joining me here and that you're tuning in each and every week. But I would love to know what is really resonating for you. So my ask to kick off the year is that you either rate or review the podcast. That would make my heart sing. So thank you if you would be so generous to do that. But I'd also love to know exactly what it is that you're enjoying about the podcast. So please send me a DM on Instagram. If there's any topic that you'd like me to cover or some more content in a particular area, please let me know. It's always great to be able to engage with my community and know what's really resonating. Podcasting can be a little bit of a lonely ground because you don't get any of that direct feedback. So if there's something that is resonating or there's something more that you'd like to know or there's an area that you think that I would need to cover that's going to help you, please let me know. So I would love to love to connect and hear more from you. But this is it. We're kicking off the new year again. This is the first episode for the year ahead. We're going to be back to regular programming from here on in. So I'm going to be back again next week. But until then, have a beautiful day and I look forward to chatting with you again next week. Thank you for joining me for Work Life by Design. If you enjoyed this episode, I'd love you to rate, review or subscribe or all three in iTunes and share it with your friends so we can continue to build this community. 
I would love to hear from you. If you have any thoughts, questions or suggestions, you can connect with me on Instagram at Melma or send me an email at melissa at melissamarsden.com.au. I hope this episode has given you a few sparks of inspiration so you can design a work life you love.